there was a transfer student who dreamed of becoming a high priest. This student's name was Sai, and he wanted to change society and guide people in a better direction. Years ago, during a rainy night, a woman left him in front of the church so that no one could trace his location since he was their hope. A few years later, his first day as a student of the Constant Magic Academy arrived. While he was at the station where he was going to ride a bus for school, he noticed the old woman behind him who was picking up the things that had fallen from the baggage and scattered on the ground. He volunteered to help her and when he was about to carry her things, he was suddenly attacked by a girl. She turned out to be the granddaughter of the old woman and she mistook him as a theft who wanted to take her grandmother's baggage. But after the girl found out that her suspicion was wrong, she immediately apologized to Sai. She introduced herself as Junko. Sai noticed her uniform and he found out that their school was the same, so he also introduced himself to her. While they were on their way to school, he mentioned his dream of having a better society. And he also mentioned that he wanted to become a high priest, which surprised Junko because it was very difficult to achieve. Sai knew about this, so he promised that he would work hard to achieve it. When they arrived at the Constant Magic Academy, Junko accompanied him to the infirmary. When he entered here, he met the physician and one of the school's instructors, named Tori. Along with other transferred students like him, they were presented to the artificial spirit, named Yada, to check their physical condition. He also had the ability to predict their possible jobs in the future. Since almost all of Yada's predictions came true, Sai hoped that he would say that he would become a high priest someday. When his name was called, Sai did not expect Yada to say that he would be the future demon king, and this caused the other students to be afraid of him. Even though Tori asked to repeat its prediction, Yada still said the same thing, and the students started to panic. The former demon king tried to destroy the world a hundred years ago, and this caused the people to be afraid that it might happen again. A few minutes later, Tori accompanied Sai to his room. When they got there, Sai found out that Tori was also their homeroom teacher. Junko was also his classmate but she seemed to be angry at him. When Tori introduced him, his classmates were also scared. In order for his classmate not to judge him, Sai tried to tell his plans to them. But because of his criticism of the system of the current world and his plans to change it, his classmates were reminded of the former demon king. After that, Tori made him sit in the empty chair at the back. Once done in their attendance, Tori assigned Junko to be the class representative. But one of their classmates, named Hiroshi, opposed this because he wanted to nominate Sai to be a representative as well, and this made Junko angry. However, Sai immediately rejected Hiroshi's nomination because he only wanted to be a member of the cleaning committee. But he did not know that the cleaning committee of the school was different from what he was expecting. So Junko challenged him to a duel, and since he was a suhorist, Torai allowed it. Junko started her attack and Sai just dodged until he got hold of her weapon. At that moment, his arm suddenly grew and released such a strong power that even the barrier made by Torai could not stop it. This incident quickly reached the student council office. When Sai and Hiroshi returned to their dormitory, he begged Hiroshi to accompany him in the girls' dorm. In order not to cause panic to the other students, they passed behind the building. Sai wanted to apologize to Junko. So when Hiroshi pointed the window of her room, Sai immediately went up to it. When Junko noticed him, she immediately confronted Sai. Junko was so angry and was noisy that other students heard them. Because of this, he decided to leave, but Junko chased after him. Until they reached the forest, and he met a woman there. This woman was thinking that he was her prince. So she decided to protect Sai from Junko. Junko did not care and used a shadow clone. And in order to protect Sai, the girl immediately hugged him. He used his very strong power, causing a large part of the forest to explode. A few moments later, a female android came there who introduced herself as Kiron and said that she was the observer of Sai. After she healed Junko, she ran home crying because of shame that her body got exposed. Sai was about to chase Junko, but Kiron stopped him because she was going to ask him something about the incident that happened with the headmaster of their school. When the girl heard the word headmaster, she immediately became invisible and quickly left the area. It was only here that Sai found out from Kiron that the girl was Kaina who was also his classmate. When they went to the headmaster's office, Kiron informed them of the results of his investigation that Sai had no intention of harming Junko. 
And as for Kiron, Sai found out that the headmaster requested her from the government to watch over him. After he and Tori left the office, Tori gave him his student handbook. It had the ability to call so he could talk to other students through telepathy. When he got back to the dorm, Kiron also went with him because it turned out that she would share his room with her. The next day, as they were about to enter the school, the head of the girl's dorm, named Fuji Ko, greeted them. She offered him her help in case he was in trouble. Because of this, he was encouraged that finally, there was someone who understood his situation. Since Kiron always followed him, his classmates were wondering about her and their relationship. After their class, he pretended to be using the restroom, then he called Fuji Ko to ask for help about his problem on Junko. He told her that they would meet at the back mountain, but Kuron must not see her. But Fuji Ko told him that she could deactivate Kuron by pulling its tail. When they got to the back mountain, Kuron detected a mana. It was from a dog that transformed into a huge demon dog when it absorbed mana. When it attacks them, Kuron shot it, but her weapon did not work, so Sai quickly pushed her away. Sai held the demon dog, and after he removed the mana that it absorbed, the dog returned to its normal form. After a few moments, Sai had the opportunity to pull Kiron's tail, and it he was able to deactivate her. Just in time, Fuji Ko arrived and promised him that she would tell Junko that he wanted to meet with her somewhere else. Fuji Ko also found out that he would like to be a member of the cleaning committee, but she suggested that he could join the disciplinary committee, because it does not have a member yet. Then she gave the magical medicine to Sai, and she explained that if he and Junko used it on the two of them, they would understand each other. In the evening Fuji Ko called Junko to inform her that Sai wanted to meet her. She added that Sai threatened her to obey his orders, that's why she called her. Because of this, Junko thought that Sai might do something bad to Fuji Ko if she refused to meet with him, so she decided to go to the place. After the conversation between the two of them, Fuji Ko brought out a jar with the head of her older brother who died when he was young. She told his brother about her plan to make Sai or the future demon king as her personal slave. The next morning, she called Sai to inform him that she had arranged his meeting with Junko and they would meet at the basement floor of the old barracks. When he got to school, he first went to the student council office to inform the student council president, named Riri, that he wanted to be a member of the disciplinary committee. Since they also knew the gossips about him, Sai was immediately accepted because this position was perfect for him. It was immediately announced to the whole school which worried other students. In the afternoon, after school, Sai went to the dorm to prepare what Fuji Ko gave to him. Kaina suddenly came and knocked on the window while carrying her rice cooker. They talked for a few minutes until she decided to leave. At that moment, Sai had to deactivate Kuron so that he could leave as well without being followed. He immediately went to the old barracks, and as soon as he entered, he was suddenly attacked by a student. There were other students with him, and another one was about to attack Sai, but that student was surprised when Sai suddenly got up. It turned out that they were one of the reasons why no one wanted to be a member of the disciplinary committee. When others attacked him with magic, he easily blocked it. The group took Hiroshi who already had a swollen face after he was being beaten. When Sai saw him, he got angry and attacked the three students. When the leader of the group attacked him, Sai also stopped him and retaliated, causing this student to be tied to the wall with chains. When Sai broke one of his legs, his colleagues immediately ran away. Junko suddenly came at the area, and she thought that Sai was doing bad to the other students. No matter how he explained to her, she still did not listen to him. When she was about to prepare to attack him, Sai used what Fuji Ko had given to him. But it did not work, because the magical medicines he had placed were gone. It was when Junko decided to leave, so she could gather the other students who also had a grudge against Sai. Fuji Ko was watching him and she was surprised that the magical medicines that she had given him had disappeared. This magical medicine had the ability to make those who use it subservient to the person who gave it. The next day Junko announced her plan to form a group to fight Sai, then she encouraged the students to join her. So by 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they all gathered with their weapons to face Sai. Hiroshi wants to help him, but Sai did want him to be in danger, so he told Hiroshi that he planned to run away from them. When the students started to attack, Sai quickly ran away. They continued to attack him while chasing him that he fell, then he faced Junko and the others below. When Junko was about to attack him, Kainas suddenly came there. 
Kaina said that she knew about Junko's secret love on Sai, so the other students thought that they just got involved in their lover's quarrel. Because of this, the students got angry at them and wanted to attack Sai and Junko. It was here that Kuron used her weapon that released a lot of rice, because Kaina knew that the students would like it. When they got home, Sai found out that Kaina had put the magical medicine that Fuji Ko had given him on the rice. They also learned from Kuron's analysis that the medicine had the ability to make a person subservient to the who gave it since it was mixed with black magic. Sai wondered if Kaina knew everything that Fuji Ko was planning from the beginning. One day, their class did an activity where the pair would pass a mana ball on each other so that they could learn more about how to properly control their mana. Torai asked Junko to partner with Sai so that she could guide him properly. Junko threw the mana first, and when he returned it, it became so strong that it exploded. They immediately took Junko to the infirmary because she lost consciousness. Torai approached Sai to suggest that he try to train in the mental self-discipline chamber. Because Sai wanted to control his power properly, he followed Tori's advice and immediately prepared to go there. Fuji Ko also found out about Sai's plan, so she wanted to take advantage of this opportunity so that she could control the future Demon King. She remembered the day that his older brother died. Her older brother allegedly discovered something in the school ruins, so the government used necromancy to question him about it, but he could not remember anything. His older brother was so scared that he tried to run away, and this caused him to die in an accident. When Sai entered the chamber, he did not expect that Kuron would also enter there to accompany him. They would stay there for 12 hours, and when the time is up, the switch outside would automatically open the door. After a few moments, Sai was surprised when he saw Kaina inside the room. While Fuji Ko was already outside and was planning to apply illusion magic to the chamber. Once Sai became affected, she would be there to help him, through this, Sai owe her something and would be loyal to her. A few hours later, Sai accidentally broke the wall, and they find a paper on it. It turned out to be a map of the school, and it was written on it that the treasure would only appear once all the three keys were collected. But they did not thought much about it at first, and Sai started meditating. Kaina suddenly complained that she wanted to pee. At that time, Fuji Ko was already outside the door, and she thought that Sai was mentally unstable. For this reason, she did not use the illusion magic and just opened the door, thinking that this opportunity was perfect to make Sai consider her as a goddess after saving him. But she was surprised that it was Kaina who came out, and when she saw the map, Fuji Ko took it and quickly left. When Fuji Ko got to her room, she immediately asked her brother about the map, but he could not remember anything. The next day, she was surprised that someone was spreading the copy of the treasure map. When she returned to her room, the map was no longer on her desk. She suspected that Sai had taken it, so he immediately asked him. But they found out that it was Kaina who was spreading the copy of the treasure map, because she wanted to give other students a chance to find the treasure. While they were in the room, they found out that there were some students who had been attacked by a monster after they tried to find the treasure. Because of this, Riri assigned Sai to announce to the students that the treasure hunting was strictly prohibited. While Sai was announcing this to the students, they just got angry at him because they thought the Sai ordered Kaina to spread the map, and he was really the mastermind behind it all. Suddenly, a woman attacked him and told him to go to the location indicated by the map to prove that he was not the one behind it. Sai agreed, and before the woman left, she introduced herself as Eiko from the Teruya family. Before he left, Fuji Ko met with him and gave him a magic gun that he could use on his quest. Besides Kuron, Hiroshi also came with him. Eiko suddenly appeared because she also wanted to join them. When they reached the first mark on the map, Kuron read what was written on the map that it was supposed to be for Yamato Butchera. When they entered inside, they saw many tombstones. Sai suggested that they look for Yamato's tombstone because it was on the map. After a while, they suddenly saw a tornado coming towards them. After Junko found out that Sai was not in his room, she went to Kaina to ask her. When she found out that Sai had gone somewhere and Eiko was also with him, she immediately left to follow them. On the other hand, Eiko attacked the tornado, but after this, the tornado retaliated on her. It was the moment that Sai used the magic gun, and with its power, he destroyed the tornado which turned out to be bats. They continued their search until they found the tombstone that they were looking for. Sai got a small toy from the tombstone with a recorded voice. 
Fujikao was also watching them, so his brother remembered how he was going to use it. Kaina suddenly came in her room, and when she saw the group in the crystal ball, Kaina invited Fujikao to follow them. While Junko was on her way to follow them, she accidentally fell into a trap. The group of Sai continued to follow the marks on the map, and when they reached the next building, Hiroshi was surprised when one of the armors on display suddenly moved. That armor attacked them, and even though Sai used the magic gun, it did not work on the moving armor. When it attacked again, Sai was able to block and knock it down as well. But it just got up and walked away from them. Eiko picked up a device and found the limestone cave. They had read what to do once they complete the three keys. With the help of Kiron's tools, they immediately found the cave. When they entered, they found a hot spring inside. Sai went to the water to find the key's location, and Eiko followed him. They did not know that Junko was also there, who heard their noise. When they all met, it was the moment when Sai found out that Eiko was actually a government agent. While Junko and Eiko were fighting, Sai saw the shrine, but there was a wolf guarding it. When it attacked Sai, the wolf suddenly fell asleep. Eiko quickly approached the shrine, and after giving Sai the key, she immediately left. After a while, Kaina and Fujikao also came. They went back to Kuron and Hiroshi who were both put to sleep by Eiko. After they came out of the cave, they found out that the three things they got belonged to Fujikao, but Fujikao was not familiar with the key. When she moved it, she activated the teleportation magic and they all entered it. They were all surprised when Riri appeared to them. She told them that they were in a game which was prepared by the student council. But Fujikao suddenly ran towards the so-called treasure. Riri quickly blocked Sai from following Fujikao. They also knew that only death would come to Fujikao, so when she completed the instructions, the dragon appeared to them. Since Fujikao was the one who freed the dragon, it wanted to test her if she was worthy to be served as its new master. When Sai tried to approach Fujikao to help her, Riri blocked him again. Once the dragon recognizes him as the Demon King, it will only prove that he is indeed the Demon King. Kaina suddenly shouted, and they all saw what Eiko's brother had done. After what he did, he deleted his memory, causing a man to kill him immediately. Because of this, Fujikao started crying because she did not know that this was the truth. Sai and Junko were forced to fight Riri, so they could save Fujikao from the dragon. After Riri stopped Junko, it was here that Sai released his extreme power that even his eyes suddenly changed. Because of this, Riri failed to stop him, and Sai got the chance to block the dragon's attack. Then the two fought, and after getting few punches from Sai, the dragon was knocked down. The dragon asked his name, after Sai introduced himself, the dragon introduced himself as Petterhausen. Sai had been recognized as its new master, and Hit's only request was for Sai to become the Demon King. When they got out, Kuron talked to her bosses. They want to control Sai by using Kuron and ordered her to seduce him. Because of this, Kuron tried her best to complete the mission, so Sai was surprised that she suddenly acted strange. One day, their academy held a seaside school. In the afternoon, while Junko and Kaina were with Sai, he felt that as if someone was watching him. Kaina saw Hiroshi, so he approached him and found out that he was from here. Hiroshi intended to visit their house, but Sai noticed that something was bothering him. So Hiroshi mentioned about the vision in the lake in case the Demon King returns again. He said that a demonic monster would appear in the area, but a hero would also come to defeat it, as well as well as to defeat the Demon King. Sai told him not to worry that much about it, but they did not understand each other, so Hiroshi left him. Once again, Sai felt that someone was watching him, so that night, he decided to leave the inn, because he was so bothered by this feeling. Chiron also found out about this, and brought out a mana detection radar. Meanwhile, Fujikao was in the ruins and talking to Petterhausen. She mentioned one by one about her dream of becoming the evil queen of Sai. A few moments later, Riri came to inform them about the student council and the school's plan for them which includes Sai. She also mentioned that the higher officials planned to use Kuron to control Sai. She added that from her gathered information, a member of the inner cabinet had a plan to start a war. It was the Ministry of Magical Intelligence or Tei Saimo 8 who were experts in anti-magic technique. Riri said that she would do everything to stop them. When Riri left, Fujiko tried to call Sai, but she could not reach him. 
On the other hand, the mana that they were following suddenly disappeared, and because Kiron heard that someone was running away, she immediately followed it. After a while, Kaina came and told Sai that Fujikao asked her to tell him a message, since Fujikao could not call him. She informed him about the Saimo 8 who was planning something bad on him. But Kaina was so drunk that she could not remember anything else about what Fujikao said. When she hugged Sai, he remembered someone he used to know because of Kaina's hairpin. Kuron suddenly kicked him, and after he heard something strange which followed by a shot, he saw Kuron falling down the stairs. Then he saw the man upstairs who was the culprit, and this man immediately left. As he was about to chase after him, Kuron stopped him and she slowly got up. Kuron knew that this only meant that she did not succeed in her mission, so she said goodbye to Sai. At that moment, Kaina woke up and remembered what Aiko told her. It was about the mission given to Kuron that if she failed to do, she would be removed as an observer. While Hiroshi was at their house, he remembered the day when Yada told him that he would be a hero in the future. His younger sister, named Yukiko, talked to him. Apart from knowing that he was a future hero, she also knew that the future Demon King was also in their school. They overheard the conversation of their guests who were making fun of him being a future hero. He could not bear to listen to them anymore, so he decided to go back to the inn. The next day Yukiko visits the inn, and she asked Sai if he was the future Demon King. Hiroshi came to interrupt them, but they already heard that Hiroshi was the future hero. Since Sai still denied being the future Demon King, and she thought that Hiroshi did not want to be a hero either, Yukiko left in her annoyance, so Hiroshi and Kaina immediately followed her. It was then that Sai realized the mistake that he had made. Hiroshi and Kaina reached the lake, but they still had not seen Yukiko. While looking at the lake, Hiroshi also mentioned to her about the legend of this lake. Kaina suddenly heard a scary noise, so Hiroshi told her that there was also an underwater cave that was connected to the sea. He added that inside this cave was an altar which was created by his grandfather, and there was also a sword stuck in a big rock that only the hero could pull out. When they heard someone's voice, Kaina immediately went to it. They saw a man near the lake, and after a while, a magic beast came out from the water. Yukiko was not far away, so the man approached her. Hiroshi rushed to go to his sister to try to help her. But he could not use his magic because the monster was just absorbing his mana. When Yukiko got away, the man attacked Hiroshi, causing him to be thrown into the lake. After a while, Sai and Junko came to the area, and the man introduced himself as Mr. X. Sai was surprised that Mr. X also knew that he was the future Demon King. Then he saw Kaina and Yukiko who were captured by this man. When Sai found out what Mr. X did to Hiroshi, he immediately attacked him. The two of them fought, but because of the noise that Mr. X was using, Sai could not fight well. Hiroshi went in the underwater cave where the sword could be found. He successfully pulled it out, and after a while, he got a device which was a D13, and it had an activation default command, called Brave. When Sai got up, he laughed because he discovered something about how he could defeat Mr. X. When the enemy attacked him, he just beat up his enemy. Mr. X got up, and he aimed at Junko. But suddenly, Kuron came to block his attack. They found out from Kuron that Mr. X was a member of Simo 8. Kuron attacked Mr. X, and because his power could not affect her, she easily defeated him. Then they immediately chased the magic beast, and then they noticed someone came, who turned out to be Hiroshi or the brave hero. Using his high-temperature plasma sphere, the brave hero quickly defeated the magic beast. He tried to kill Mr. X, but Sai stopped him. They did not argue and he did not continue his plan and when the brave hero left, he quickly appeared to them as Hiroshi. When they got home, Kuron explained why she was able to come back as an observer. She mentioned that the mission to attract Sai was just part of the plan to prepare Sai for his marriage to a woman from a respected family. And the girl he chose was Junko which surprised Junko. Previously, there was a day when Sai bought a hairpin for the new girl in the orphanage because she would not stop crying. After that, he left the orphanage and told the girl that if she would not lose the hairpin, he would definitely not forget her. While he was under the tree, Kaina approached him to ask about his birthday. He took this opportunity to ask Kaina if they had met before, because he had given a hairpin to someone when he was young, like the one she was wearing right now. Kaina only remembered that they first met when Junko was chasing him. 
She could not remember where she got the hairpin that she was wearing. She brought back the topic about the birthday in the conversation and invited Sai to celebrate it together. But he did not tell her the date and he promised to let her know when the date was near. While Fujikao was in the cave and was trying to control a magic beast, she found an egg. When she picked it up, Petterhausen suddenly came, so she immediately hid it. She brought it to her room to hatch it, but she tried to do it three times, and she still failed. A few moments later, she fell asleep, and Kaina came in the room to take the egg. As soon as she woke up, she immediately asked her older brother about the egg. And she seemed to have an idea on who was the culprit. Kaina brought the egg to Sai's room. When Sai touched it, it absorbed his mana, so he immediately threw it away. When they saw it at night, it grew bigger, and when Sai touched it again, it burst. It turned out to be a magic beast, and when it attacked Kaina, Sai quickly saved her. Chiron was about to attack the beast, when Fujikao suddenly came there. Fujiko thought that the magic beast would recognize her as its master, but she was also attacked by the beast. Sai attacked it, but it only grew bigger due to the mana that it received. The beast flew to the city, so Hiroshi followed it as he was disguised as the brave hero. After it destroyed a building, Hiroshi came to confront the beast. Using the high-frequency blade, Hiroshi was able to cut off one of its heads, and using the molecular cutter, he was able to completely defeat the beast. When he detected that there was someone in the destroyed building, he went to her. She immediately hugged him. Only then did he realize that it was Hoshino Yuri, who was his TV personality idol. When Yuri's colleagues came, he also quickly left the area. One day, Kiron informed Junko that she called her parents for a formal meeting with Sai. Junko immediately called his father, and since they were already ready, she could do nothing but invite Sai to come with her. Sai was currently with Hiroshi, so she invited him as well. In the afternoon, a man who was a member of the inner cabinet of the Ministry of Magical Intelligence visited the headmaster of the school. The headmaster knew that the Simo 8 belonged to this ministry, and Sai happened to pass by and overheard it, so he remembered Mr. X. This man warned the headmaster about the school security because of the magic beasts. And since Sai could already feel that the man was referring to him, he answered him. The day came that they had to leave to go to Junko's place. After a few hours of travel, they arrived at the village of IGA. They were suddenly attacked, and Junko knew that this was done by her sister, Yuko. When she approached them, Hiroshi immediately recognized her as Yuri. When she found out that Sai was going to marry her sister, Yuko was about to ask why she chose him, but Junko stopped her from insulting Sai. It turned out that Yuko could smell the magic beast in Sai. Her sense of smell became sensitive after she was bitten by a magic beast when she was a child. When they reached the house, Junko's father spoke to Sai and asked him a few questions. Because he liked his answers, they had a party to formally introduce Sai to the other members of the clan. After the party, and while Sai was in the room, Junko went to him. Before Junko could do what she intended on him, he stopped her. He mentioned something that made Junko cry, and before she left, she also told him to forget what happened that night. But the other members of the clan suddenly appeared to him because he made Junko cry. To avoid the fight, he immediately left the room, but they chased after him. Until these men fell into a trap that was made by Eiko. He learned that the Teruya family's residence was also nearby, and Eiko also wanted to invite Sai to her house. But Sai rejected her invitation, so she became angry at him and prepared to attack him. Meanwhile, there were only a few minutes left before Kaina's birthday, and since she did not tell Sai the exact date, she had no one to celebrate it with. She had no idea that there were members of the Teruya family who had been spying on her, and when they confirmed that she was inside, they started to act. Aiko mentioned to Sai that her father was a Sohara's archbishop, and sometimes he also carried out assassination if he sees a threat to the Suera. When she mentioned that Kaina was his father's current target, Sai got angry. And even though Yuko tried to attack him, the Fuma shuriken that she threw just melted. Eiko took advantage of the opportunity to get out of there. So Sai immediately left there to save Kaina. While Kaina was being attacked by a snake, a man who was a member of Simo 8 saved her. He quickly eliminated the three opponents, and when Eiko's father found out that he was a member of the inner cabinet, he also learned that he was Yamato Butchera. 
Sai came and he learned from Yamato that Kaina became a tool to control the recognized god of Suera. He also mentioned that the Suera wanted to kill Kaina in order to stop what he was planning. When Sai found out that Kaina was only going to be used to fulfill his plans, he decided to fight him to protect Kaina. At that moment, Fujikeo suddenly appeared with many magic beasts. It turned out that she had finally discovered on how to make the magic beasts follow her commands. So when Hiroshi came there, the whole school was full of magic beasts. While Eiko was watching this, her father came there and was trying to heal himself. When she found out that Yamato was fighting the Suera, she decided to kill his father. Because of this, she took over his father's position as Suhara's archbishop. Suddenly, a man came who introduced himself as a member of Simo 8, with a code name 2V. After Junko and her father watched what was happening at the school, his father told them to prepare to help the Suera in fighting the magic beasts. The news reached the members of the clan that Eiko would lead them, because Sai killed her father. Junko's father gave her the Sohaya's blade which she would use in battle. The ninjas of the Teruya and Hattori clan quickly gathered. Sai and Yamato fought, and since Sai could not fight against Yamato's weapon, Fujikeo decided to save him and retreat first. She planned to take Sai to Paterhausen's location because it was Sai's weapon. They met the headmaster at the door because he intended to stop Yamato while Sai was still recovering inside. When they got inside, they were met by Riri to show to them the gathering of ninjas who were prepared to attack but she also planned to stop the ninjas together with the student council. Eiko assigned Junko and Yuko to attack the magic beasts. When Sai came face to face with Paterhausen, he said that he planned to defeat the Suhara's god who was recognized by most as a god. After a while, they decided to go to its location. When Junko saw them, Junko forced to attack even though it was against her will. But Sai did not fight her, and he made a promise that if all this was over, he would take care of her. Hiroshi came and managed to injure Paterhausen, but Paterhausen just enjoyed the feeling because he had not felt this way in a long time. 2V told Eiko that based on the information he gathered, there was also a device in the basement of the school that could control the magic beasts. Because of this, Eiko immediately assigned Junko and Yuko to enter the school to destroy this device. While Sai and Hiroshi continued their fight, Sai told him his plan to the Suera. When Paterhausen attacked Hiroshi, it was the moment when Hiroshi activated the counter Demon King combat mode. Suddenly, they saw the Jenkaku or the strongest battleship of the Imperial Army. As it approached them, the battleship rained bullets on them. The headmaster faced Yamato, and he remembered the time when the two of them were together to defeat the former Demon King. But after they defeated the Demon King, he realized that Yamato wanted to replace the Demon King. Yamato also remembered the day when Identity or Rimu chose to be with the Demon King. He had become a time traveler, and this time, he would not let himself miss this opportunity in order to fulfill his goal. When Paterhausen retaliated at the Jankaku, 2V moved his doll that was controlling the Jankaku. He brought the Jankaku down that Paterhausen and Sai got affected by the crash. After witnessing what happened, most people thought that Sai was dead, but Kaina knew that he was still alive. And since the magic beast inside Yuko was still reacting, Junko also thought that Sai was still alive. When Hiroshi went to where the Jankaku landed, he saw the headmaster and Yamato. He intended to fight Yamato, but Brave was suddenly deactivated. Yamato said it happened because he was the one who designed the device. Hiroshi was able to prevent Yamato from killing the headmaster in exchange for his cooperation in defeating the Demon King. While Kaina was explaining to Fujikeo why she said that Sai was still alive, Fujikeo felt that someone had entered their location. It turned out to be the Rubber Man, who was also sent here by 2V to destroy the device that controlled the magic beasts. Fujikeo attacked him, but he seemed could not even feel any pain. When the ninjas entered the school, Riri confronted them. It was the moment when Riri revealed what she saw, that Eiko was the one who killed her father. In Eiko's anger, she ordered the ninjas to eliminate Riri, but Riri just beat them all, until she got close to Eiko. Suddenly, Kana and Aru came, and Michi helped Kaina. Because of Michi's power, the enemy could not do anything until Yamato arrived there. As he approached Kaina, Kaina suddenly changed her persona and became Rimu. But Yamato quickly put her to sleep, and Fujikeo failed to stop him from taking Kaina. When Michi was knocked down by the enemy, Fujikeo pulled her to escape from their enemy. 
Since Riri was just beating up the ninjas, Eiko called Junko to confront Riri. Eiko made Yuko as a hostage so she could make Junko follow her order. When she came face to face with Riri, Riri immediately understood Junko's situation. When the ninjas were about to use the five-way trap, they were attacked by two V's dolls. Junko tried to attack Riri, but she just got ahead of her. She intended to use Sohaya's blade, but she could not pull it out. When Eiko was about to kill Yuko, Hiroshi suddenly came to stop her. Hiroshi then took Yuko, and they left with Yamato. Eiko also quickly left, and 2V wanted to recruit Riri, but she refused, so 2V ordered his dolls to target them. But suddenly someone threw an explosive at them which was done by Fuji KO. Riri got the chance to attack 2V, but when she approached him, it turned out to be just a doll and they heard a voice. They felt a tremor and saw that the Jankaku was moving. Then they saw Sai who was the one doing it. After he found out that Yamato took Kaina, he immediately decided to follow Yamato. Eiko came back and ordered Junko to stop Sai. Although Junko wanted to attack Eiko, her colleagues tried to stop her. But she followed what her heart wanted, and this was the reason why she was able to pull out the Sohaya's blade. With just one attack using it, she immediately defeated Eiko's men and when she was about to kill Eiko, Kiron suddenly came there to stop her. Eiko was about to run away from, but she was shocked when her father appeared in front of her. A few moments after Sai's group left, Hiroshi met them. When Hiroshi activated the counter Demon King mode, Sai told Paterhausen of his plan to fight their opponent in a close combat. So when he rushed at Hiroshi, Hiroshi could not believe what Sai was doing. And because of the damages that he was receiving, Hiroshi wanted to stop him because he was worried about Sai. Since Sai refused to stop what he was doing, Hiroshi decided to release the plasma energy, causing them to fall together. When Yuko approached the place where the two landed, it was only here that she found out that Hiroshi was the brave one. Hiroshi thought that Yuko would be angry at him, but she suddenly hugged him. When Yamato reached the Suera, he was confronted by the two android guards. But with his weapon, he easily defeated them. After opening the big tree, Rimu talked to him to stop him from what he was planning to do, because the method that he was using was ineffective. And no matter what he planned to do, the result would be the same, because it was not his fate either. When he came close to Rimu, he hugged her, and Kaina's persona came back. He was about to push Kaina inside, but Sai came there. Yamato attacked him, but Sai made a counterattack. Then it was followed by another attack, causing Yamato to lose his consciousness. Sai noticed that something was wrong, and the android said that the Demon King would merge with the identity to become the father of the new world. But Sai had no intention of carrying out the contract, because his plan was to defeat their recognized god, so that he could completely change the system. The androids had also mentioned that Sai was just a tool created by their god, and that he should be the one to destroy humanity by the command of their god. Sai answered that he was not surprised by this, because he had been feeling it since he was a child. Because of this, the androids had activated the Suhara's defense system, causing it to float. He immediately called Paterhausen to follow it, and Kaina also followed them. As soon as they entered inside, they were immediately attacked by a lot of arrows. They went up, and after Paterhausen attached himself to it, Sai also decided to fight. Paterhausen removed the limiter of his mana, so that he could use his full power, but it was also possible that his body could not handle it. When he opened a dimensional hole, Paterhausen noticed that Sai hesitated to release his full power because he could destroy the tree, the Shudo space that they were in, and the others. Kainas suddenly appeared, and after a while, Sai finally decided to release his full power. Paterhausen knew that Sai's powerful man would exode, so he would try to control it. When Kaina hugged Sai, she talked to Rimu. Here she found out what really happened to Yamato and her true purpose. They also decided to change some parts of what happened, so that Sai could return to a normal life. After the explosion, Junko immediately looked for them, and she found them quickly. After a while, Hiroshi also came there with Yuko. They were surprised because she was able to approach Sai, and she also knew that Sai was not the Demon King. She revealed that it was the vice president of the disciplinary committee who said to have helped a lot to defeat the Demon King. So they thought that some of her memories were changed, which was done by Kaina. When they arrived at the school, they learned from Kiron that almost everyone's memories were changed, except for the people who were involved in the battle. 
As soon as Sai turned to Kaina, she immediately left. This is the end of the last episode of Demon King Daimao. I hope you like it and give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel so you won't miss new uploaded videos. Thank you for watching.